on your head, you most likely have it. And if you don't, you probably once did. We're in Nairobi this week to learn about the hair economy and specifically the growing market of natural hair products for women. Paul Nganga is the unlikely man behind Mikala Hair Essentials, one of the fastest growing natural hair care brands for women in the region. Paul, great to see you this morning. Good to see you. Thanks for having us by the factory. Well, Are you Sana? So I'm going to need you to put on this. Okay, great. What are the requirements? So Let's go. take a look, yeah. What was it in the market that you saw that motivated you to start this business? If you look at every mall or you take a walk downtown and just look at the amount of hair that you see and the fact that that hair at some point or another it will need to be taken care of. Now that's a very very uh, lucrative motivation and that's part of the reason why we went to the hair care business. If I look at the social dimension, we have managed to create at least 50 jobs directly, at least. Uh, and we have others that have been created indirectly. Uh, so from a social perspective, I think we are doing well. Uh, we could be doing better if we had proper uh, capital levels. So what James is doing is actually uh, doing a trial of uh, a formulation for a, a free a shampoo that has no sulfates. I think we've done one thing very well. One, we made sure that there's a very safe way that you can take care of your hair. Because all our products don't have parabens, don't have formaldehyde, don't have any of those kinds of carcinogenic chemicals that are toxic to the human being. But also, uh, we've made it uh, so affordably uh, because we try to maintain a balance between uh, profitability and doing good for mankind. The positive impact you are hoping to have when you started this business. Do you feel like you're realizing it? If you look at what's been happening in the last uh, five, ten years, uh, is that you continuously seeing a lot of women who are opting off the chemical or chemically treated hair and into natural hair, maintaining their hair in a natural form. And uh, at some point we thought this might be a fad, so it could pass. But it's not passing. In fact, it's been continuing um, and been very consistent. Uh, in, in the environment where I am, you most likely find that there are more people with natural hair or sporting natural hair than there are in uh, chemically treated hair. Now, that is an indicator of something that is good uh, for someone who's in manufacturing of cosmetics, specifically for natural hair. So through your journey, is the business growing as you thought it would? We've been growing at astronomically uh, high percentages of 100 and something percent. Uh, I think um, every year uh, we've done, the least we've done is 74% since we started and we've done all the way up to 300%. I do foresee us continuing to maintain at least a uh, year-on-year uh, -year growth of not less than 74%, which is abnormal because the market is, is uh, the cosmetics market specifically for hair care, we're talking about 11 plus uh, percentage growth per annum. And what challenges have you encountered as you've been on this entrepreneurial journey? Uh, taxation. So the cost of uh, the product uh, is going to go up as we become more and more compliant to all these taxes that are coming up. The fact that you can't quite get uh, patient capital easily uh, and the valuation for that business, of course, uh, is something you may not necessarily have clear into the fingertip. The ecosystem is not very efficient, so you find that there are certain things that we don't have that can match the international standards. In 2017, the size of the hair care market in Kenya was over a hundred million dollars. If we look at Africa and the Middle East, the size of the market was $5.6 billion. The global market is expected to grow to $211 billion by 2025. 
and that's up from $160 billion in 2016. Paul, thanks so much for having us to your factory today. It's been great to see the operation. The pleasure is all mine. And uh, all the best with it. Now that we've seen how natural hair products are made, we're on our way to meet Wangari Mushiri, a naturalista and hair blogger, as she has her hair done by Alice Oracha. Um, my journey has been really interesting because I used to live in Australia and uh, there's not a lot of people who know how to deal with natural afro hair um, or any afro hair of any sort. So I had to kind of learn as we went um, on YouTube, on different resources that were online. The products have really made us to get like the defined curls. Her hair is now, you can now see the way her curls are now visible and it's easy. When you're now going to the sink, you won't struggle too much. In comparison to nine years ago when I first went natural, there wasn't a lot of natural hair products made locally. So we had to import a lot of them from America, from Europe, and of course that you know um, has an extra cost to it. Um, so getting products was quite difficult. Now you have brands like uh, Marini and a few others that are not only manufacturing locally, but also um, distributing locally and they're everywhere. Yeah, we have different local products. But now it depends with the type of the hair to know whatever the hair needs. When it's dry, when it's in a, a better condition, in that way you'll know the real products to use. One of the keys to natural hair, or to afro hair, is to manipulate it as little as possible. Um, so as much as I, as I can avoid being in the salon, I will. Uh, but I do come here about once a month. So um, just to maintain the hair, to clean it, uh, make sure that it's moisturized, to make sure that it's managed, also trimmed. So everyone else is now going to natural, because they find out the ones that has natural hair has easy time in the morning, packing it, going to work and everything. And we were not accepted before. For example, when you are going to the office with your hair rough, looking rough, they would think you're not, your hair is not managed. But right now, they understand. So in a month, I spend about uh, 30 to $50 a month, uh, and that's including getting my hair done by somebody else, by a professional, um, and the products themselves. One of the key things that I actually tell a lot of my um, followers on my blog is where you can start is in the kitchen with olive oil, um, avocado oil, coconut oil. There's a lot of um, natural oils that we use just to cook that are really good for our hairs as well. So we don't have to go out and buy the expensive um, ready-made products. You can actually make up your own products at home with uh, cheap local avail locally available materials. I'm hoping to see more competition. I'm hoping to see more products coming in. Um, I'm hoping to see people embracing more of their natural hair themselves. So um, definitely I want to see more people getting more experimental with natural hair products and natural hair itself. The future of the natural hair products market, far from being hairy, looks very bright. That's all we have in Smart Money this week. We'll see you next time.